Hi guys, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about tail rot. I feel like all the other channels are like, oh let's go to a pet shop or like, this is my new pet or my new pet gets an outfit from Forever 21, I don't know. And I'm like that creepy kid at the back of the class like, let's talk about tail rot. But you know, <laughs> when it comes to illnesses, I believe the more you know now, the more likely you'll be able to prevent something happening or at least recognize symptoms early on, which in some cases can literally save your pet's life. So let's first look at what tail rot is and what causes it. So tail rot, also known as tail necrosis, is sadly a somewhat common issue with lizards, especially bearded dragons, but almost anything with a tail can get it. It's a condition that can be caused by a number of things including trauma to the tail, infection, hypothermia, blood clots in the tail, but probably most common is the build up of unshedded skin which the owner neglects to remove and over time these incomplete sheds build up causing blood constriction to the tail. So if you imagine this is a tail and the rubber bands is the unshedded skin and gradually over time with each and every layer is tightening and tightening, the tissue starts to die off and things like bacteria and decay will spread to surrounding tissues causing that to die off too. Thankfully recognising tail rot is actually quite easy. If you weren't familiar with what it looks like before this video, I hope you are now, but basically it usually starts at the end of the tail and will work its way up. Uh, the tail will look dark and hard and kind of dry and withered. It won't be very flexible and kind of, as the name suggests, kind of rotten. Before we move on to how you would treat this, I did want to quickly touch upon the term necrosis in general as this condition isn't just limited to a tail. Necrosis itself means the death of most or all of the cells in an organ or tissue due to disease, injury or failure of the blood supply. You may have actually seen this in leopard geckos when they lose their toes due to poor shedding and their owner neglecting to remove that skin. Sadly, this is far too common with leopard geckos and this is why a big responsibility as an owner of a leopard gecko or any reptile for that matter is to ensure that all of their unshedded skin is removed. I've done a few videos on this including tips to easily remove the skin so I'll link one of those videos here for you so you can check that out. An extreme case I actually saw here on YouTube of necrosis and a leopard gecko was one that I believe was either rescued from a shop or a really bad owner and it had loads of unshedded skin on one of its legs so much so that its leg had gone black and withered and eventually had to come off. Now I don't want you guys to be too scared and think I've seen a piece of skin on my reptile, it's suddenly going to get this, but if the skin is left and the unshedded skin continues to build up over time, it will have problems, so just make sure you remove it when you see it and just avoid problems in general. Anyway, back to tail rot. So can we treat this, are there any home remedies and can this actually kill our reptiles? So to answer the last question, Yes, in some extreme cases where the reptile is just left, this will quickly and aggressively spread to the point that it can kill your pet. However, it's not necessarily that the loss of a tail will kill your pet, it's more that the infection can get into the animal's bloodstream and its organs and that infection can cause serious problems that can kill your pet. So just imagine you have this like withered arm, <laughs> quite, quite an image in your head right now, a withered arm with no blood supply, it's infecting, it's spreading like of course, of course you would think you were going to die from that because there's an infection. So if you leave this, yes, it can definitely probably kill your reptile. However, luckily tail rot when spotted early can be resolved fairly quickly by a vet. So time is of the essence. Now it's important to know that there is an any home remedies that will definitely treat this problem, so you must see a vet. So what treatment may the vet offer? If the tail rot is mild and no longer spreading, your vet may prescribe some antibiotics, and in some cases they may also suggest you bathing the tail in something like betadine or betadin solution and water. However, sometimes these things just don't work and every case is different. So if you do spot this issue, the best bet is just go to the vets and follow their advice. However, it is worth noting that if the problem is progressing quickly, you're not happy with the treatment, or it kind of seems like your vet doesn't really know what they're doing, which is a fair point 
because not every vet is trained to cope with reptiles and they might not know exactly what they're doing see another vet after all this is your money this is your pet's life if you're not happy see someone else another treatment that may come up is surgery basically the infected area must be removed this is probably the most effective treatment as you're literally removing the problem area however you will end up with a reptile with a little nub tail but that is far better than them suffering so if you think your reptile may be suffering from this what should you do so here's our plan of action first take them to the vet proceed with the correct treatment as i said time is of the essence and if you leave it it will spread and it will get worse the vet may also be able to tell you what may have caused this and so then you can do some self-reflecting. Maybe it was some trauma to the tail or maybe in reality you were neglecting taking unshedded skin off. As I said though there are other options, there, there could have been blood clots and so on, there could have been things happening inside your gecko or any reptile that you weren't 100% aware of. But if you do think it's down to the shedding issue then upgrade your care. Now yeah, add in a humid hide, a shedding hide, or increase the humidity, maybe you have a crested gecko or something that needs high humidity and you haven't been providing that and it's had really poor sheds. Sometimes it can be internal, sometimes they need more supplements, so if you're not providing the correct supplements, they're going to have shedding issues. But also, if you are just neglecting removing that skin, you need to upgrade your care in terms of giving your reptile the time and effort it deserves. Removing unshedded skin can be a pain, it can take a while, but it needs to happen. If you can't be bothered to do that, you shouldn't have a reptile. In other cases though, you may have just rescued this lizard and it already came to you in this state. So when rescuing animals in bad condition, be aware vet bills will follow. I totally respect people who want to take on an animal and improve its life, but the most frustrating thing is them taking it out of a bad situation but they're keeping it in pain just in a fancier tank. So if you are going to take on animals that are in bad condition just make sure you have a vet fund because it will be necessary and a lot of lizards that are like left a lot of the time they do have stuck sheds they do have skin problems so just be aware of this i feel like this part's so rambly anyway i hope this has made you more aware of this issue maybe you've actually experienced this with one of your reptiles let me know below how was it resolved and do you know why it occurred I'm lucky that most of these illnesses, if not all, that I've done videos on, I've never personally experienced with my reptiles. But I always think with reptiles and being a reptile owner, we should be aware of all problems that could occur, so we are always prepared. I will leave links below to helpful articles. I'm not a vet, so if you are really concerned, only use this as like an introduction to tail rot, but not as treatment or an absolute answer to whether your pet is infected. Please take it to a vet. But thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you and goodbye.